Greetings, ladies and mantle gents, and welcome to this latest edition of Tales, Tales from Outer of space. space. And as always, I hope that you enjoy. Story number one, Shady Humans, written by British Tea Company. Most people are surprised when I tell them the most powerful group within the entire Union sits on Earth. They're always so surprised about how some random planet in the middle of nowhere could possibly be so powerful in terms of political power. To date, Earth has had membership within the Union for at least 500 years, but has not once ever had anyone born from that world fulfill any important role within the Union. Never once has there been an example of a human serving any important political office, and chances are, there never will be. It seems strange that I am calling humans the most powerful demography within the Union. There is no history of them having any power or movement on record, and we know quite well that humans are simply referred to as those people when they're brought up. Hardly anyone can even remember what a human probably is. That is the terrible thing about modern society. What if I told you that humans were the most powerful demography? What if I told you that in truth they also hold the most political power out of any race in the Union? You won't believe me. Well, what if I told you that all the banks within the Union are owned by humans? Go on, look it up, see? All the banks within the Union are owned by humans. Does it surprise you if I say that banking was a system that humans introduced? It doesn't. Good. Let's make it very clear right now that if there's one thing that humans are good at, it's finance. To date, 10 out of the last 13 economic booms since the last 500 years were as a direct result of the banks which the humans had set up. Roughly four economic recessions have been averted solely because of the systems which the humans had set up. Now, it doesn't end there. What have I told you now that out of the top 100 businesses within the Union, 83 of them are owned by humans? And out of the 17 that aren't owned by humans, 13 of them have the majority of the shareholders being human. Good. You believe me now. Now then, here's a final thing. The average human within the entire Union occupies the top 0.1% of the galaxy. An average, your regular human is above the age of 30 will gross at least 4.6 million credits per year. The average income of a human at the age of 18 ranges from 185,000 credits to 300,000 credits. How? They are goddamn people responsible for most of the things that we know as modern finance. Stocks, the humans made that. Banks, the humans made that. Bonds, the humans made that too. 99% of the tax policies and politicians are making, probably drafted by some human pencil pusher. If there's one thing the humans are good at, it's making money. Money is how everything works, it's how politics work, and by extension, money means power. The humans are the ones who sponsor politicians. They don't get into cesspool themselves. Why do you think everyone who runs for any position always takes a trip to Earth first? They want to get into the pockets of the big businessmen so that they can get, uh, campaign donations. Of course, you know how that works. Scratch my back, and I'll scratch yours. Yes, good observation. The humans, in fact, do own the majority of politicians. There are few who go against them, of course. But, as you know, the humans always get their due in the end, one way or another. Some people have tried to screw over the humans in the past. How did it end for them? Well, the humans don't use the law to uphold something that was done under the table, and they certainly don't break it either. The most powerful race is certainly above petty murders. They got a better way. They make enemies with them. They finance your enemies. They steal your supporters, your funding, probably even the clothes you wear, all stolen the legal way. They are above most shady organizations in the sense that you won't cut off your fingers for not doing the favor you owe. They prefer ruining you instead. End of story. Story number two. Missing, written by Terracron. We've got another one, Doc. The exasperated attendant wheezed. His skills fluttered in a hypnotic pattern. 
possibly in an attempt to catch her attention. But Hislant was determined to finish her report first, and ignored him. It wasn't until he started to turn green that she felt pity on him. There are plenty of surgical staff in call, Dremel. Why do you keep coming to me? Her frown started to gain color. She wasn't really able to control it, but it should be clear sign to the young being that she was not amused anyway. He wheezed, Well, um, you have the most experience with them, ma'am. The rest of the staff are scared witless. He wheezing just didn't end, and she was scared that he was going to have a fit. Her pity for the now almost vibrating youngster got the better of her. Fine, I'll go and see. The look of relief on his face was almost worth the oncoming anxiety. She made her way down the lightly colored calls, appreciating the cool air. She worked in several hospitals around the system, and this was the only one with an atmosphere that she could stomach. The pastel of the call was a universal constant, however. It's something you learn to live with, she considered. Somewhere in the distance, a pulse monitor yelped aggressively. Something beeped. All things considered, this was a good place to work. Would have been great if it wasn't for the proximity to the new space base, Disappointment DA-9. It was huge, it was close by, and it was stuffed to the brim with humans. Apparently, the base was a retreat for apes returning from several walls, and almost all of them came to her hospital first. Nyland was freaked out by the humans, her fronds fluttered with color, and she took a deep breath. It had been months since her first encounter with a human with a prosthesis, and she still shuddered to think of it. What's worse is that people started to look to her as the resident human expert. Apparently, they'd all given her incredibly praising reviews, saying that she was professional and frankly adorable. Flattering, maybe. Annoying, definitely. She found her way to the clinic, and her first human of the day, sitting on the examination table, was a familiar face. Teeth bared in a now familiar form of greeting amongst humans. She returned it as best she could, until she noticed his arm. Since she'd had to break the news to him, Simon Grant had indeed been able to strip his arm to expertly molded prosthetic skin. Apparently, he'd also managed to lose it above the elbow. Most disconcertingly, he was waving the remaining stump, she couldn't find the words. Hey, Doc, it's been a while since I've been here. Hesselant looked down at her pad and up at him again, trying to fit the remainder of the arm inside her blind spot. If I'm wrong about this, uh, it'll sound like I'm being a bit racist, but weren't you the attending last time, too? She nodded and swallowed. Um, yes, yes, I was. Um, I was. She went through a violent purple. What seems to be the problem? She forced out, trying not to look at the metal sticking out of the human shoulder. I lost me arm, he said with a smile. It finally dawned on her. The human must have snapped. The idea of a prosthesis becoming too much for him. He probably ripped it off himself. She needed to handle this delicately. You were in a fight. We did what we could to fix you. Ah, uh, no, Docker. I, I mean, I lost my arm. She looked at him, nonplussed. I took it off last night, and now I can't find it. What? I've been drinking last night, you know, a couple of beers. The squad thought it would be funny if I took off my arm, and now I can't find it. Y your, your squad, you, you? She tried to breathe, felt hyperventilation was just around the corner, and a nervous laugh escaped her throat. Where do you think it is? She managed to squeeze out. He looked sheepishly at the anatomical posters on the wall. I may have thrown it out the airlock on the dare. She tried to stifle the hysterical giggle that was forming. She really did, but it escaped nevertheless. Simon looked at her with a confused frown until he realized that she'd laughed and joined her. Well, have you fitted with another one, Mr. Simon Grant? Could you make the next one red? Make it look like I'm going faster. Still trying to stop laughing, Hisland made her way to the door. Once outside, she leaned against it and controlled her breathing. She shook her head. So weird, and laughed. End of story. I just want to thank the T5 patrons and channel members. Cam Maxwell, Casper Arnholtz, Australia the Dreamer, Trigger95, Pudigiol, Meridian117, Olivia, 
Jordan Buxbaum, Angry Marine, Albard and Gasta, and Barky. Thank you very much. And that, my friends, concludes this video. I hope that you enjoyed. There are links down below both to support this channel and for the author of this fiction. Anyways, I hope you all have a fantastic one, and I'll see you next time. Cheers.